Hey y'all, I'm Aeon. And I'm the Lioness. And you're listening to Box Number 512 Podcast. Grown Black Trans Woman Talk. Changing your world, one conversation at a time. The show begins now. Welcome to another installment of Box Number Five Soul Podcast, Grown Black Trans Women Talk. I am your co host, Aeon. And I'm the Lioness. So we will start with updates. Lioness, you go first. I'm going to turn my computer off. I'm in the middle of baking a pizza. So don't mind me, honey. A single woman has to make her meals. But let's go ahead and update the people with your weekend. No problem. So, so, so the lioness is weekend. So this weekend, y'all, I spent a lot going on. So in, in personal life, um, I've got an opportunity. I actually um, got a fellowship and um, that's going to call, that's going to require that I have a lot more active um, communication and conversation in a professional setting with the other women in my cohort. So shout out to the women in the fellowship, the Free Leadership Fellowship, um, and all of the other women that have been blessed to um, be a part of that. And that's why I'm very excited. I also have um, some news. Um, Here in Atlanta, so it's very bittersweet. Here in Atlanta, um, Sophia, Sophie Velasquez, um, a, um, um, a member of our Latina trans community here, Um, She was um, connected with Australia and a couple of the other um, 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 nonprofits here in Atlanta. There is a visual tomorrow. Um, With this episode, we'll um, have maybe the link or something for the um, information about it. But there's a um, visual tomorrow. It's on the box number 512 page all all together at her apartment where she was murdered in, in Brookhaven. Um, we're going to have a vigil, we're going to have like a slash rally. Um, and so it's, we're asking that we share, we want to try to get as many people as possible. And I know that there's predicted to be some media also, so around this. So yeah, I'll keep everyone posted on that. In my, um, well, back to personal life, Mother's Day weekend was beautiful, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, my sister Brianna came to Atlanta and my husband and I enjoy her thoroughly. So usually when my sister comes, it gives very, um, we're in the house, very subdued, very just girl time. But like we went out, we went to this nice little spot and named the Grill Village. In, um, it was, she was cute, bitch. She was cute, the ambiance, the it's an old firehouse, so it's very inside. It's very posh, and it has these big, great oak doors. It's just gorgeous. It's a really beautiful building, and it's in a beautiful location. And the pictures came out wonderful, and the conversation was wonderful. And I just, I just be so excited because I sometimes wish my sister lived closer. So when I get a chance, always oh, good to see her. Um, other than that, um, just living, loving, laughing. Um, I will be getting my hair done this week. I'm excited. Um, Life is good. I don't really have a lot of complaints. I just want you guys to keep in mind as we we go through, you know, living our lives that we don't forget and we don't become callous to the fact that our sisters are passing. And I want us to also remember to give the families and the loved ones grace during these times of difficulties. Um, I've seen it recently where community members will in their overzealousness to scoop a story or to take the narrative or to be in control of something, they end up stepping on the family and on the work of community leaders. Um, So just to give a little bit of context, guys, I'm here in Atlanta recently, we had an issue with regarding this particular um, young lady, Sophie. Um, we've had an issue around the press releases and the communications for um, one of our fallen members, Sophie, because there are members that are white that are in our community that are very well-intending and very good allies. And when Black trans women die, 
they really, really come come out to support. Um, particularly a, a few of, uh, there's a few women I can name of that are there. Part of the problem though, when you have white allies entering in black spaces is that they tend to um, think that they know better than you. And that part of what their privilege is, is no, no, you, you need to tell me what you're doing. And inform me, enlighten me. So you take up space in the meetings, inform me, enlighten me on what's going on and what's her family doing and what's this person doing and what's that person doing. Because you want to help, but only if you're controlling. That's not allyship. And that is something that, particularly in the South, because a lot of times our white sisters and our white brothers are having to be liaisons in this super racist paradigm, they take up space and they sometimes can get the big head and feel like we report to them. So then in our community organizing sometimes, particularly when we're doing grassroots stuff around murders or grassroots stuff around just celebrating our fallen, they will take the narrative, grab the mic, set the press conference up and have not considered a community of color. That's something that does happen. Thankfully, shout out to the community leaders here. We were able to get apologies from this individual. We had a meeting today where, was, where the girls rallied and a portion you know, of the lioness was in the building, fiercely reading this person because I had words with her in the past. And after that conversation on in our private space, we were able to, I think some members must have reached out to her and let her know how bad it offended community. Because ultimately what we had was a, 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 a what, what will be considered a more visible, more powerful, more well-connected organization, white org, basically saying, we don't care about what the family want to do. We don't care about what the girls on the line want to do. We don't care about the nonprofits and the relationships that she had and the nonprofits that she was affiliated with. We don't care about what they're organizing. Because you haven't spoken to me in a timely manner, I'm just going to be surfing. And that's a narrative that has happened over and over again. So allies, what we ask is that you step up and step back. There's a, there's a way to do it. There's a way to do both. Step up, be supportive, and support and push other people forward and not always yourself. Just because it's easier for you to get shit done doesn't mean it's right. You should be the only one to be able to do it. That's all I have to say. Sis, I'm sorry for that long, extended... Um, mix, but I really wanted to add that portion. And what did you think about what I said just a moment ago? No, I agree with that a hundred percent. Like, stop. Like, we, we, another trans woman of color has died. Now is not the time to grandstand and get your moment in the sun. Now is the time if you're really an ally to do the work and connect the connect the people that are most impacted or most marginalized. Give them the access, give them the amplification, connect to the, if you're really for the community, connect to the community. And I think it's even more important to do that in the South where it is racist, where it is extremely, is more um, racial tensions. So the, the fact that y'all had to call her out and she was just oblivious to it, it's just like, sis, this is 2021. Mm -hmm. So I actually want to say before we close out today, before I do the the final takeout, do you mind if we have a moment of silence for Sophie? I know y'all. I know you. Sure. Yeah, I think that'll be um, relevant because ultimately, what what adds to trauma in situations like this is when you feel like how you grieve is unacceptable. So it was also the very much the tone of oh well the way we want the way her family wanted it and the way her 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 community wanted it was ghetto in the eyes of this power structure that had more money and access and they decided to throw something that they felt was more not more, you know, more affluent. Believe it or not, it was all vanilla, no seasoning, ugly flyers. It wasn't gonna be anything special like that anyway. Right. But, <laughs> Cause when we're not present girl, it very much is a, a trans flag and some letters on it. Like it's never, <laughs> like, you know, we bring the seasoning. So, um, I'm glad that our community came together. And I hate that it came in this moment where we're grieving, but I'm glad that we showed ourselves today to be an, organiza an organized community. And even though we don't talk every day, girl, it's like this. Right. Yeah. Three girls don't play it at all. <laughs> so I will start with my update. So as Samaria previously mentioned, 
I was in Atlanta for this weekend. I had a really, 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 really good time in Atlanta. I stayed at a hotel in the Midtown area. And the purpose of me going to Atlanta is to kind of jumpstart my journey to getting like my BBL and my, um, my breast lift. But the first step for me into doing that was getting my skin together. So uh, shout out to uh, Ray Fair of Fair Skin Spa. Yeah. Um, and he has a location in Atlanta and in New York. I um, first went to go get my microdermabrasion to take care of this, my, my facial skin because, honey, it was time. And I left his, I left his uh, business glowing. And then the next day I went back and got uh, some laser work done. I started on my chest and my underarms and I retouched, like I don't have a whole bunch of hair growth on my face because I went through like intensive laser like back in the day. But you know, after you stop going for a while, your hair never grows back how it did. Yeah. But you get like little patches. So uh -huh. and and it, it had been, patches. Not the right. And it had been over a year since I stopped. Because before, when I was in Chicago, it was this place I went to just to get, like, little $60 touch-ups for now and then. But then when the pandemic happened, all of that got shut down. I don't even know if that salon was still open. And then I had moved back to D.C. And it was this lady that I had been going there so long, and I referred so many people that um, when I went to go get my laser done, she basically did it for free. But her ass fucking retired. So I wow. just had to, to step my pussy up and... Do what I need for me. Oh, you'll so, be coming to Atlanta every time? Well, I was going to come back to Atlanta, but I'm going to New York in June, and he has an office in June, so it just made more sense since I already am going to New York, and I already have a room in New York to just go up there and get my next treatment. So when I go back to New York, I'm going to get my legs and my ass and my stomach done and, you know, anything else I need done, but... I'm like, I'm trying to get back to me. I'm trying to get back to the girl that I used to be. I'm trying to be on top of my, and it's not, and it's, I'm still a divestment hoe. I'm still a opting out hoe. I'm not, this has nothing to do with a man or me trying to attract men. This is about me. This is about me feeling good, feeling conscious, feeling comfortable in my body. And I just, I just feel really good about that. Like I said, I had, I can't really tell how much I've grown in a person as a person. Usually, I'm not gonna lie. Usually, when I come to Atlanta, it's about pulling niggas and having fun, and it's nothing wrong with that, right? But in all the years that I've been coming to Atlanta, with the exception of <laughs> times when I came to see you and we chill at your house, yeah. I realized that I never like did any of like the touristy shit in Atlanta because. I was so busy trying to pull a nigga or trying to get a nigga to come over. And it just made me realize, bitch, how much I was not really living life, how much time I wasted. Mm -hmm. And like, just I'm just at a place where move, moving forward, I'm just moving. I'm more committed to just living my life, taking more chances and just having fun. And that's exactly what I did. So we got to go out to the grills, the um, Jamaican restaurant. The food was fucking amazing. I had some brown stew chicken and some macaroni and cheese and a cocktail. I didn't even want the brown stew chicken, y'all. But when it came and I tasted it, I was because it was a, it came on accident. They actually did, did get two different orders, right? Thing. But it was so good. I was like, okay, it was good, <laughs> and I liked it. I liked it because I remember it's this like chain of Jamaican restaurants in Chicago. I like Jamaican food, but I don't. I don't really like spicy. I don't like it when it's so spicy that you have to have water to drink it. Cause it's like that food we had in the grills. It was seasoned really good. It was just flavorful. And ever, no shade. Ever since I gave up juice and I only mainly drink water, mm -hmm. food tastes so much better to me now. Right. Like, I feel like I can just taste food better. So that food was amazing. Um, I went to Henry's yesterday before I left and ate there. I wanted to go on jo to Joe's on Juniper, but I didn't get there, but I'll be there next time. Mm -hmm. um, where else did I go eat? Oh, I ordered some, I didn't go eat, but I ordered, because the weather wasn't warm enough in the morning for me to go, when I go to brunch and sit outside, but I ordered some food from Atlanta Breakfast Company, or no, Atlanta Breakfast Club, um, um, the Flying Biscuit Cafe, and then my, that last day I was there, 
I wanted to ride the um, Elena, the little monorail thing, and I mm-hmm. rode that. And I, there's oh, this like, really did the touristy shit. Right. I went to I went to Fleet Auburn Market, and oh. it's a little it's an ice cream shop, like a black owned ice cream shop. I went there. And I like I was just really like just a being like to me it's all about being in the moment, savoring the moment, having fun with my damn soul. Just having fun. Now don't get this with the bitch. Thank you for listening to another episode of Box Number Five Spoke Podcast, Grown Black Trans Women Talk. And don't forget to become a patron on the Box Number Five Twelve Patreon page, where we have all new exclusive content and also don't forget to follow us on our social media on our instagram twitter and facebook pages and also become a subscriber on our youtube page until next time bye